welcome back to the class on electrical machines too. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the construction and the EMF equation in synchronization. So, whenever we are saying the synchronization equation, means that we can operate it as a synchronous generator as well as a motor. In case of synchronous generator, if we give the mechanical input, it will be converting into the electrical output. Suppose if we give the electrical input, then it will be converting into the mechanical output. That machine is nothing but a synchronous mode. So why you are calling as a synchronous mode? The speed of the machine is constant. That's why you are calling as a synchronous. Mission means that we can operate it as a generator as well as a construction wise. There is no difference between the motor and the generator. But the only thing is, what is the quantity we are going to give as input? What is the quantity we are expecting as output? That only deciding whether the machine will be operating. Motor after generator. So let me see the construction of synchronous mission. It is consisting of shatter as well as the rotor. If you come to the shatter, shatter is nothing but a stationary part. The rotor is nothing but a rotating part. The shatter is consisting of shatter frame, shatter core. Shatter core is laminated. The outer periphery of the shatter core is sorted to house the three phase distributed bundle, which are displaced by 120 degrees at the plane space. Now, the scatter core is laminated to reduce the core losses. When you come to the rotor, the rotor is cylindrical structure. The outer periphery is plotted to house the DC winding. This DC winding is nothing but a field winding. The two slip rings are there. By means of these two slip rings and brushes, we are going to give the DC support to the field winding. If we come to the rotor, two types of rotors are there. One of them is cylindrical rotor. This is the cylindrical rotor. Another one is the Silent pole rotor. The silent pole rotor is nothing but a projected pole. The projected poles are placed on the rotor core. The cylindrical rotor provides a greater mechanical strength. It also gives a good dynamical mechanical balance because the structure is symmetrical about the mission axis. Generally, this type of rotors we are using in a high speed turbo generator, nothing but a thermal power plant. Now, when you come to the silent pole rotor, there is no difference in the construction of a shatter, but if you see the rotor, this is the rotor construction, this is a shaft, these are the projected poles, these are nothing but a field winding. This field, for this field winding, they are applying the DC voltage through the brush, the slip ring. Generally, this is designed for the high diameter, low axial length. Moreover, this type of rotors we are using only for the low speed application. It also accommodates the more number of poles. Generally, we are using this type of construction for the Hydro power plant. Now we are going to see the operation of the synchronous generator. In case of synchronous generator, here we have taken the cylindrical rotor type synchronous generator. In the stator, we place the three phase stator winding which is displaced by 140 degrees Kelvin. Kel kel On the rotor, we kept a field winding. The field winding is excited by means of a DC supply through the slip rings and bracket. This is the north pole and this is the which are created whenever we are giving a DC supply to the field winding on a rotor. After that, if we give the mechanical input, the rotor will be rotating in a shatter. So the flux will be rotating. Whenever the flux is rotating, there is a rate of change of flux linkage with the shatter conductor. According to Padel law of electromagnetic induction, the voltage will be induced in a shatter winding. That we can take out that voltage or electrical power from the free thermal. In this manner, the voltage will be induced in a scatter winding whenever we are giving the mechanical input to the rotor. See here, make sure that we should apply the DC voltage to the field winding. Now, just now we have seen that whenever we have given the mechanical input to the rotor, the rotor will be rotating and the rotor, the field is placed. So, the flux will be rotating. There is a rate of change of flux linkage with a scatter conductor. The voltage will be induced in a scatter conductor. Now we are going to find out what is the expression for the, the voltage induced in a scatter wind. See here we are defining the sum of the parameters. Z is nothing but a number of conductors per phase. Phi is nothing but a flux per pole. P is nothing but a total number of poles for which the rotor generator is designed. N is nothing but a speed of a rotor in RPM. F is nothing but a frequency of the voltage induced in a scatter winding in a head. T is nothing but a total number of turns per phase. Suppose if the rotor is completing one revolution, how much time it will be taken? The time taken to complete the one revolution of the rotor is the 60 by n seconds. So once the rotor is completing one revolution means there is a rate of change of flux in case on a one conductor that is equal to d pi equal to p pi. d pi is nothing but change in flux, pi is nothing but flux per pole, 
P is nothing but a number of poles. Where D T equal to 60 by according to Federal of Electromagnetic Conductor E equal to D pi by D T where number of conductors are equal to the one. So in place of D pi we substitute this value. In place of D T substitute this value. Then we are getting the P pi n by T. In a synchronous generator we know the relation between the frequency P's and number of poles. F equal to P n by 120. So in place of n we substitute the 120 F by P and simplify this equation. So finally we are getting the 2 F by. This is the average voltage induced in one conductor. Scatter is consisting of three phase winding. Each phase is consisting a z number of conductors in series. But we know the expression of the what is the voltage induced in one conductor that is 2 F by. Per phase if the z number of conductors are there, then the total voltage induced per phase is equal to the 2f by z. Suppose if you want to represent the same expression in terms of a t means, then in place of z, you substitute the 2t, then we are getting the 4f by t. This is the average voltage induced in a per phase. This is the AC voltage. So we want the RMS voltage. We have a one quantity. That is the form factor defined as ratio between the RMS value to the average value. So RMS value equal to form factor into the average value. For sinusoidal voltage, form factor is 1.11. See if you substitute that value in the above equation, we are getting the 4.44 F phi. This equation is same as the transformer EMF in this equation also. But in case of alternator, the winding is distributed. So it has a winding factor. So now the winding factor here we have add for this equation that resultant equation nothing but a, the actual voltage induced per phase equal to 4.44 kc kd f pi t where kc is nothing but a chord factor or pitch factor kd is nothing but a distribution factor f is nothing but a frequency pi is nothing but a flux per pole t is nothing but a number of turns per phase. There are two types of rotors are there one cylindrical rotor and Silent pole rotor, nothing but a protection. Now we are going to make a difference between this. cylindrical rotor generally have a good mechanical strength used at a high speed up. Silent pole rotor has a less mechanical strength used at a low speed up. Cylindrical rotor is designed such a way that high axial length and low diameter of a rotor. Now if we come to the silent pole rotor, it is designed such a way that low axial length and high diameter the rotor. The cylindrical rotor can be accommodate only the less number of poles, whereas the silent pole rotor can be accommodate the more number of the poles. Cylindrical rotors we are using for the turbo generators, nothing but a thermal power plant. Silent pole rotors we are using a hydro power plant, nothing but a hydro generator. Now classification of synchronous machines. The synchronous machines are classified based upon the three types, based on the arrangement of field winding and armature winding. Under these, there are two types of synchronous machines are there. One is rotating armature type synchronous machine, rotating field type synchronous machine. Based upon the type of frame over used, generator driven by IC engine, generator driven by steam turbine, generator driven by the hydro turbine. Based upon the shape of the field, there are two types of machines are there. One is non silent pole synchronous machine. Second one is a silent pole synchronous. Non silent pole synchronous machine is nothing but a cylindrical rotor type synchronous. Now we are going to see what is the advantage of the rotating field and the stationary armature. This is the rotating field type generator. This is the stator, the field winding we kept on the rotor, the rotor will be rotated. But generally, this type, type of design we are using where high voltage, high power generation. Because in case of high power and high voltage generation, it requires a high amount of space. It should be kept at a stationary point. Moreover, whenever the voltage is increasing, the insulation between the coils also requires a more amount of space, it is also possible. So it is easy to keep a high voltage, high power winding on a stationary part, where the low power and low voltage winding on a rotor. The field winding generally we are applying the 2 to 220 to 230 volts, DC voltage only. So that is a very low voltage so that we are keeping. Rotor. Suppose if we keep the three phase winding on the rotor means it requires a three set ring. If we keep the DC field winding on the rotor means it requires only the two set. Moreover, the voltage difference also will be lesser. So the insulation requires between the two set rings also will be lesser if we keep the field winding on the rotor. See, so, this is the 
construction where we are using a armature winding on the rotor. Suppose if we keep the armature winding on the rotor, then it requires a three stepping. These are the three stepping are required. The field is stationary, but it is a projected field winding. In this diagram, we shown the projected field winding. Moreover, if we keep the high voltage winding on the rotor, large amount of sparking also will be produced between the power rotor and the rotor. These are the different advantages where you can see the rotating field and stationary arm. But this type of construction we are using for the low power rating of the where the field is stationary and armature is the but in power plants, hydro power plants and normal power plants we are using only the type of construction because they are generating power at 11 kV and 33 kV. So, we, it is very high voltage. So, we have to keep the armature winding as a stationary power. Thank you very much. If you have any doubt, you can ask me directly or you can ask in the comment box on the YouTube channel. So, that I am always welcome to answer all you.